Well, welcome to the next video in my bow making series. Thank you for clicking and checking in on it. I'm not going to tell you what this bowl is. Uh, it is except that it's a special purpose bowl and I'm making it for my wife's birthday. I did mention it in a previous video. If you happen to see that, you, you'll know what it is. I'm not going to show a picture or anything else yet. I'll just let you see the bowl when it's finished. But what you're looking at is the ingredients. This is cherry. I got that's, that's for the base, it's got a separate base, and this is for the, the main bowl body. I've got two pieces, that's, that's, that's cherry, that's got two pieces of uh, walnut, eighth inch walnut, it's going to be an accent on the base. I've got 300, one quarter inch slingshot ammunition, about a pound's worth, close to it. And I've got some epoxy, but that's fast set epoxy there. Uh, I've used that on some other projects. First time I've used it in a while, but I'm going to use that on this bowl. That's the ingredients of this bowl. If you want to see how all that comes together, we'll stay tuned. I'm going to get right into it. Uh, I'll go step by step. There's several different uh, there's different kinds of cuts to do on this one I haven't done before. In fact, one of them's even backwards from what we've been doing. Uh, when I say backwards, cuts in the opposite direction. So well, let me get, uh, get going here. I'll tell you about each cut, they're, they're all a little different. Uh, as we go, I'll explain each one as I'm doing it and not get too long in an introduction here. So let me get uh, started with the first step and we'll see what that is and we'll get right to cutting on it. Alright, the first step is to get your guidelines on here. Of course, I'm going to put tape on this. I'll carry them over to the side and redraw them. Uh, but the main thing I wanted to check out here is the lengthways has to go with the grain for the stability of this little bowl. So let me get, uh, th this is cherry, it's going to be a little bit harder to cut. I may use some clear tape to help lubricate. So let me get my pattern printed out. I'll get it lined up and get it mounted and we'll start making the first cuts. So I've completed all the steps necessary to get ready to do the first cut. Uh, Draw the lines, I put some tape on to mount it, printed the pattern and lined it up with the guidelines, and I covered it with clear tape. Uh, as far as the clear tape goes, I used to use that on almost every project I ever did for a long time. I still like to use it, it just gets expensive as many different projects as I've done, but it's really good for several things if you never used it. Uh, I like, it helps lubricate the blade, especially in a thicker or harder wood and I like it on the uh, compound patterns which is usually a thicker wood and uh, also if you have a very complex project a lot of fret work a lot of details and you just have the bare pattern on there as you're handling it cutting it you smear it you get it dirty and mess up your details and that's one the main reason I like to use it uh, it's not really necessary on this sort of thing but it does help with this lubrication and also on a fretwork job, you have such detail sometimes your glue doesn't want to hold a spot. And you've so watched enough of my videos, you've seen me trying to hold pattern down as it came around in a small cut. Well, this, this doesn't stop that completely, but it does help. But anyway, I'm going to use it on this one because we've got a thick board and it's fairly dense material. So I'm going to get me a, a new uh, blade in my saw. Now what we're going to do, we're going to cut outside here in a clockwise direction at 23 degrees. Come back and drill an inch or hole and do the same thing on the inside. And we'll cut that first string off at 23 degrees inside and out. I'll double check that because I have messed that up. But uh, let me get my saw set up and I'll get to cutting on it. Okay, got a new number nine modified geometry Pegas uh, blade in there. I got this table set at 23 degrees. I'm going to make this outside cut. So I drill me a 23 degree entry hole. And what I like to do in this case, the south side angle and the inside angle on this ring are the same. I like to take this over and set the saw, I mean not the saw, but the drill press with the angle on this uh, outside because that's what the saw is set for and that'll be an exact match. 
Now, sometimes you get a different angle. I have to go reset it with my little digital uh, deal. But uh, anyway, this is working out so far. I had to drill a little bigger hole than I wanted to because it's the number nine. But here we go, and we'll cut this. We'll get the first screen cut. I got the first screen cut. I, I'm really pleased. It lines up really nicely. Uh, as you can see here, that's one reason I quit using the clear tape when you're trying to film. It can give you a glare. I've got lights a little bit everywhere here, so wherever I put it, it's going to give you a glare. Uh, it's not so bad cutting at an angle on the scroll saw because it's, it's angled off. It's not flat. But anyway, that's uh, where we are right now. So what I'm going to do I'm going to line that up on there, and I'm going to cut that, I'll draw that right there so I can cut the second ring, and it's also going to be at 23 degrees. First, I'm going to take this pattern off and, and mark the top of it and mark the inside so I'll know exactly where it goes. Good putting it back together and try to keep the uh, grain of the wood lined up. So let me draw this circle, mark this, and I'll go over, and I'll drill me an entry hole. I'll go over and cut that one just like I did this one. I got the drill, got it, got it marked, got the uh, drill hole, entry hole drilled. <clears throat> be the same thing as I just did, just one, one circle in, inside. Uh, so let me get this cut, and then we're going to do something different when we get to that, but we'll talk about that when we get there. I got that <clears throat> ring cut. I repeated the same step. Put that ring on there and marked the inside. Now that's that's giving me two reasons I don't like to do uh, this clear tape on a bowl, a bowl blank. Number one, it's it's hard to mark on. Number two, it's slick. You try to hold that ring there. It's difficult to hold it without it slipping. I managed to do it, but uh, I'm gonna try to avoid that. It seems to be helping this time. I really like the way this cherry is cutting. It's cutting really smooth and clean, and it's not burning. Of course, it doesn't seem to be as hard as the last cherry I cut. But anyway, uh, what I'm going to do now, we're going to do a little different step. Instead of cutting this ring next, I'm going to set the table saw the the table on the saw to 28 degrees. And I'm going to cut around this outside at 28 degrees, cut this bottom corner off to give us a little more uh, angle on that uh, next ring. So let me set my, my saw and we'll get to that. Table is reset at 23 degrees. That adds 5 degrees to what we did. I'm just going to use the same line as my pattern to go around <clears throat> the outside and just uh, angle that down a little bit all the way around. So I cut this outer, uh, this this next ring, cut this outer edge at 28 degrees, and now I've gone inside. I've drilled me an entry hole. I matched it with this on my drill press, and cut the same, cut and drilled, drilled, and then I'm gonna cut at the same angle for this ring. Have the the same angle all the way around on both sides. So that's what I'm doing now. Uh, had a little bit of trouble with my camera here, so I kind of missed a few steps, but anyway, I cut that originally uh, at a different angle, then I cut it to 28. Let me double check those numbers. Okay, the first cut on this right here was at 23 degrees. I came back and cut it at 28 to get a little different uh, angle so the bowl will be a little more rounded. Now I've drilled me an entry hole at, at, at 28, and I'm cutting this ring off so both sides of it at 28. There'll be some sanding to do to get the outside smooth. Uh, I'll cut this, and then we'll see what the next step is. Okay, I got that ring cut. 
it's uh, it's not going to match up perfectly. You can see right there you got a little bit of an edge. So what you're supposed to do is center it on there and mark the inside and the outside. And we're going to cut the outside one at uh, 35 degrees. And then we're going to the inside one at 35 degrees. So we're going to give it even more of a curvature and a slant around there. But marking this is not going to be real easy. Uh, but I'm going to do the best I can. So what I did, I just pulled that pattern and that tape off. This, this wood's cutting pretty good. I don't think I really need that lubrication. And I've got the guidelines on the blank anyway. So it's much easier to mark it. I've got my outside cut. We're going to cut that one first. This has been cut at 28 right now. We're going to move it over to 30 or 35. We're going to cut this one, and we're going to make an entry hole and repeat the same process for that that ring. And I think that's the last ring. Um, I may be thinking wrong, but I, as I remember reading through this, that's the last ring. And then we're going to do some work on that and build a base for it. But uh will be a lot of sanding and get all this to match up. But here we go. I'm going to cut that. I'm going to turn, change my saw blade, saw table to 35 and cut the perimeter first. All right, got my table set at 35. I'm going to cut, it's hard to see, but I got a line right there. On that outer line, I'm going to cut it at 35 and then drill a hole and, and do the same again like we did on the last one. All right, I got that outside perimeter cut. I used it as to set my table again on my drill press. Drill my entry hole here. Still cutting at the same angle. I left, I tried to err on the cautionary side of leaving more material than taking too much. I'm giving a little more sanding, but I'll have some material to work with. And it matches up fairly nicely. It's a little wide here. That's kind of what I wanted. I can sand that down better than trying to fill in or sand down the other ring. So now I'm going to cut this one to 35 and we'll have the last ring cut. Same scenario. Put this on there and centered it through my outer line. I'm going to go back and cut that line at 35 degrees, just like we did on this one to make it fit the other ring. Uh, that should make it all line up. You see it's pretty close, but that will give us, give us the curvature at the bottom of the bowl. Now I won't film that. I'll just cut it real quick. Then we'll start dry fitting these rings and uh, See what we need to make them sand them and make them fit together with no no gaps. Okay, I'm getting ready to glue these together now. Since uh, I've got them all sanded, I've removed all the marks off of those when you glue it. <clears throat> and uh, there is no gaps, but I did sand it a little bit. I like to have a little fresh set of wood before I glue it. Kind of sand the surface off of it. But I'm going to have to try to take this one bolt out of my press to accommodate the uh, the bowl, and I can put a, a clamp out here if I need to. But uh, that's one of the problems with this with this press; it doesn't fit a larger bowl. But I'll make it work for this one. Of course, I can just give me some more wood and make a different size one if I need to. I got the bolts; it's not a problem. But I'm making this work for this one, and I'm going to start gluing it. And, uh, and we're going to work on the base there in a little bit. I've uh, got, to, got to use those little slingshot ammunition and epoxy. And we'll, we'll get to that here pretty soon.
Okay, those four rings are glued together. I've got the inside of it sanded. And it's coming out pretty nice. This, this cherry is working really nice. I like the way it cuts. I like the way it sands. It's got a lot of work to do on the outside because I left a little extra on those. Didn't want to cut into that too deep. I can sand better than I can replace it. Or make the wall too thin trying to match it up. So now I'm going to glue the base on it. And it's going to be a little bit proud too, but that's all right. We'll sand it all down. It's easier to sand the outside anyway. So I'm going to glue that on, put it in the press a little while. And I'll uh, sand all that down, match it all up. And then we'll use this as a pattern for the little base you're going to put on it. Uh, it's a little weighted base. So let me get that glued up and let that set a while and I'll start sanding on it. All right, the main body of the bowl is together, and I've sanded it. Uh, it's sanding pretty nicely. I really like the way it's turning out so far. It's got some nice contours, and got everything nice and smooth. I sanded on the outside to a 400 grit. I got it kind of polished. Uh, I'm going to do a little more finished sanding on the inside. But what we're going to do next, I'm going to take the piece we're going to make for the separate base. And we're going to use this as a pattern to draw on that and cut it out. And uh, also got these other two little small pieces of walnut we got to cut to match it. And uh, we'll cut kind of a ring on that and glue those, those uh, walnut pieces top and bottom for a little accent ring plus to enclose that space. And that's where we're going to put, that's where we're going to put these. And I'm going to seal them up in there with this epoxy so they don't rattle. So that's the plan. So next I got to draw that pattern. I got to set the saw. I have to check the degrees and all. But I think this one we're going to cut in the opposite direction what we've been doing. We want the angle to go in, in opposite of the bow. So let me draw this pattern on there and uh, figure out where I'm going to set my saw and we'll go over there and cut it. So I placed the bowl on that and drew the outline. Didn't quite get it straight, but that's all right. I like the grain it's on. Although we're not going to be using that grain on this uh, this finished piece. We're going to replace that with the, the walnut top and bottom. The only thing you see is the side. But now I'm going to take it over to the saw. And i got to set it for 30 degrees. But instead of cutting around this direction, I'm going to cut this way because we want the flare to be opposite of the bowl. We want to flare outwards. Uh, so let me go over there and uh, get that get that angle set up and we'll cut that. Then I've got to come back and draw a 3 8 inside that. And that will be cut straight up and down. And that's going to be the hollow base for which these balls uh, slingshot in finishing goes in. These little steel balls. And then I'm going to seal that up or fill it up with epoxy so they won't rattle. So let me go cut that and we'll be ready then to do some drawing to get the inside cut made. Alright, got the saw set at 30, the table set at 30. I'm going to come in and cut it in this direction so we'll get an outward flare.
So I did some cleanup sanding around on that, made it look a little more uh, even. And so then I used my pencil, helped my thumb on the three eighths of an inch, or so we'll give, give or take a little bit, and moved around the top of that because this is not going to show. This is just going to create a hollow to put to fill up to make it weighted. It doesn't have to be exact. So anyway, I drew me a line to go by, give me about a three eighths inch wall at the top, and uh, drill me a hole, and I'm going to cut the inside of that with with no. There's a 45, 90 degree angle here on the uh, on the table saw. So, I'm sorry, scroll saw. So let me cut that, and then we'll we'll have to use this as a pattern to mark the two pieces of walnut, and I'll cut those to match. Glue the bottom one on, and we'll fill this up. I used that base that I just cut as a pattern. Uh, Will be the bottom, which will be the floor, and that'll be the top. So I'm gonna cut these. I put a number two blade in, still cutting at a straight up and down angle. And I'm gonna cut these out. I'll glue this one on, and then we'll see about filling that up when the glue gets set. Yeah, a big difference between cutting that. A little light wood, thin wood, and that that cherry with a big blade. But I, I want to stay a little bit outside the lines because I'll uh, sand it all down to match once I get it glued on. So I got the weight and the epoxy in there. I took two pours. I did seven. I did 15 centimeters. I'm sorry, mil, uh, cubic centimeters (cc). And then that wasn't quite enough, so I did another 15. <clears throat> I just wanted to get all the balls encased where they wouldn't move around, and they're all snug. It doesn't have to be full. I got a little sawdust in it too when I was sanding, but it doesn't matter. It's all gonna be enclosed. Now I'm gonna glue the top on it. Let that dry, and then I'll do some sanding on it, kind of get it shaped a little better. Um, she said something about giving it a little bit more flare, but we'll see uh, how it looks when I get there. Kind of be a personal preference. So I'm gonna glue the top on it, and then I got one more pattern that I'm gonna have to mount on this bowl, and we'll cut on the side of it some, and that'll kind of give you an idea if you don't already know what the purpose of this bowl will be. Uh, so, you know, I really like the way it's turning out. It's looking good so far. I don't mess it up. Still, still a lot of room to mess up. So anyway, uh, I'm gonna glue the top on that, and then I'll get that pattern mounted. It will have, while this glue is drying, and then when that gets all set up, I'll shape it a little bit more. Okay, I left my mark so I could find my center hole, my center line here. I said to mark it inside and out. Uh, what I've got is another pattern, which has a line. You have to have to line up on it. <clears throat> this pattern will go in just like so, right at the top of that. And you drill these three holes, and then you cut this out with a number five. You may have to go to a uh, uh, a different kind of blade there. Uh,
Now, I might have to go to a spiral blade. I had to do that last time we did a deal like this. So, anyway, I'm going to mount this. Uh, I like to use tape because I don't like getting adhesive on the wood. Uh, so I'm just going to put a little bit of tape so I can draw that line back across it and line it out and mount that pattern. Then I'm going to use an awl, awl to mark those holes and drill a sixteenth inch or small size real bit of some sort through those holes from the inside out so you can drill from the outside. <clears throat> and that shows you where to drill. And you want a three-eighths hole when you finish it. And then I'm going to go into the saw with a number five blade and cut that one little cut. And like I say, I probably have to finish it with a spiral. I'll see how it works. Got the pattern mounted. I got the little center of the holes marked. And I'm going to take a small drill bit and drill from the inside out. Then I got some uh, brad point bits. I'll take a three eighths and come from the outside in to the bit, the uh, brad pit sticking through, and then go back and finish it from the inside. And so I drilled. If you can see that or not? There's a little hole right there. There and there. I drilled that from the inside. It's actually a little smaller, I believe. Than a sixteenth. This one already had mounted in this little chuck, and I used it on my hand drill and drill from the inside out. All I needed that, that to do was give me the point where to enter the the tip from the brad, the point from the brad point bit. So I've gone, got that in my hand drill because I'm going to try to maintain the angle, general angle of the uh, of the wall of the bowl as I drill in. And once that point sticks through, then I'm going to come back and drill from the inside and finish it out that way. I believe that was successful. It came out just the way I hoped it would. So now I'm going to take it to the saw. I'm going to get me a number five blade in it. And I'm going to try to cut this. I'm also, like I say, going to get me a spiral blade ready just in case I have to use it. Then the, the biggest part of this will be the sanding of this. That's got to be kind of smooth rounded edge and very smooth for this what this bowl needs to do. Alright, I'm going to attempt to make this cut. i got a number five blade. Uh, I'll go as far as I can with this. And I may have to switch out. Probably will have to switch out, but maybe not. Because we'll have to twist that bowl around to try to get through there. And I'm probably going to get up against my blower arm and, and, my, and the arm of the saw itself. I'll go as far as I can from each direction and then see about a spiral blade. And that's about as far as I'm going to go on those. Uh, I'm going to just go ahead and put my spiral blade in there, and I should be able to put, finish it on out then. Well, there's a rough cut. There's a lot of sanding. Got to round this off a little bit. Get that really smooth. It's going to take a little bit of work. I'll probably use a Dremel. I have a flex shaft Dremel. I've got several different kinds of bits. I'll probably work on it with that. So there it is. I did a lot of uh, work with the Dremel. A little grinding tool. 
and a little bit of a small sander. The sander wouldn't really fit in there off the Dremel, so I did a lot of hand sanding on that. And I've, I've sanded it to 120 grit. Still got to finish shaping the bowl a little bit. I want to soften the top of it up. Uh, got to be careful now not break this or mess it up. But uh, then got to make sure the bottom base matches the bottom properly. And I finish on it. And I, I took this in to my wife to let her look at it and test it. And it has been approved. And she thinks that's, that's fine. It works just right uh, for her purposes. So, uh, I guess next I'm going to work on uh, of softening the top up a little bit and shaping the bowl just a little bit more, final finishing and a final sanding. Make sure I didn't miss any spots or cause any gouges with the Dremel that I need to clean up. And other than that, that's pretty close to being finished. And we'll uh, get this matching up properly, make sure they're both flat and that they, they match correctly. I have to do a little sanding on one or both of them to get them just the way I want them. So anyway, if you don't know what that's for, you'll find out here in a little bit, but I'm sure a lot of people know by now. So uh, let, me, let me get my uh, inflatable sander set up and we'll soften the top of this bowl, match these two up and get them together and see if I can put a finish on it. Uh, this this should really start standing out. Uh, stand it with the, with the the walnut should really start standing out against the uh, cherry, and the cherry should get a little more color to it when I get some finish on it. And hopefully it'll look real nice. Uh, stay tuned, and we'll see. Okay, I've pretty well got the sanding done, I believe. Uh, smoothed this off, rounded this, and. Uh, Made it a little softer, that's what she called it. Took that inner corner off and had to be real careful. That could easily break with us. I used that uh, inflatable sander. If you caught that just right, it could possibly break it off. And, and doing the top of a bowl like that is kind of iffy sometimes. It'll catch and flip the bowl over and kind of mess up this outer edge. I've had that happen a few times. Just had to be really careful. But uh, that, then I did a little bit of hand sanding what I was a little afraid to get to in there especially. So what I'm going to do now, and I'm going to glue this base on, and it looks like it's matching up good enough. I'm not going to have to do anything. Uh, it's all flat and, and matching together real well. And the, It's not perfectly the same. That This is slightly smaller than the, than the bowl, but I'm going to leave it with that and, and glue that on. And that'll take a little while, and then I'm going to put a finish on it. And then I'll display it as it's... Uh, as she does in the book. And if you haven't guessed what it is, um, most people probably have, but uh, I'll, I'll dis display it in its form of use when I get through here and get ready to finish this video. So I'll get this glued on, put a finish on it, and then we'll see what it's supposed to be used for. Okay, so I got one coat of finish on it. Um, we'll put several more. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to say that it's finished. Was, i got to finish it, pass it on to my wife, and it'll take several days. I need to get this video up. I'm already three days behind for various reasons, <clears throat> which I made a post about that. If you had not seen, we've had some severe weather-related weather, weather -related problems here and power and Internet. It was out of Internet for almost a full week. And uh, power was off and on several times, and my phone died twice, like the battery's going bad in it. And I do this filming on my phone, so I've kind of been stuck, well, not in touch with the outside world part of this week, most of this week. But anyway, got this finished. I was in the middle of this when all that happened. So, here is its purpose. Uh, we call it a crochet bowl because my wife does crochet. I've got knitting needles stuck in it. But that's what this is for. You can use it for knitting or crocheting. And uh, the thing is, the reason it's weighted, you set it on the floor next to your easy chair and you sit in your chair and, and knit or crochet and it pulls this, this up through there. So that's what this is for. I call it a crochet bow. It could be used for crochet or knitting. So that's my wife's birthday present. She does a lot of crocheting. And as she has done some knitting, but she prefers to crochet. So, I hope you like that. 
hope you enjoy the video. I'm not sure how good it's going to be. It's got so many stops and starts in it. I may have missed some things that I should have done. So I'm going to try to get this up. This is Sunday as I finish. I'm going to try to get it up by Monday afternoon. I usually post on Thursdays. So I'm almost a half a week behind by the time I get this up. I've still got to edit it. So I hope you enjoyed that. Again, I say, and if you like these kind of projects, hit the hit the subscribe button because I got a few more bowls and I'm going to try to sum them my own designs. I'm I'm got some stuff in my head I'm working on, uh, trying to come up with something unique, kind of put my own spin on some things. I'm learning a little bit how to make them, and I'm really enjoying it, and it's kind of a wide open field with what you can do, the possibilities. So thanks for watching. Hit the like button if you like it, and I hope to see you in the next video.